Welcome to Praxis Core Module 4, Reading Skills, sponsored by TLC Tutoring Co. and Arkansas State University. Comprehension, Building Vocabulary. If you have mastered decoding and fluency, but you are still having trouble with reading, it's time to consider your reading vocabulary. One of the most frequent barriers to good reading comprehension is vocabulary. This occurs when a reader can sound out words, but does not know what the words mean. There are two solutions to this problem. One is to keep a vocab journal and note any unfamiliar words you run across. The other is to learn prefixes, suffixes, and common root words. This will help increase your comprehension because you will be able to understand and use word parts as clues to decoding the word's meaning. Comprehension, root word, prefix, suffix, example. The bellicose man stood on the porch of his antebellum home, shouting at pedestrians. I know that bellum is from the Latin root word for war, and that the word bellicose means aggressive or demonstrating a willingness to fight. Words such as rebellion, belligerent, and bellow have the same root. I know that ante means before, and antecedent is a word that comes before a pronoun. An anteroom is the lobby or small room that leads into a larger room. Antebellum literally means before war, and in the United States, it usually refers to a property built before the American Civil War. I also know that ped is the same root word as pedal, like on a bicycle, or a podiatrist, a doctor who deals with feet. Therefore, a pedestrian is someone who is walking. By becoming familiar with prefixes, suffixes, and root words, you can increase your vocabulary and improve your reading score. Common prefixes, positive, pro, in favor or forward. Proactive is a person who's in favor of taking action. To proceed means to go forward. Ultra, beyond or more. Ultraviolet light is light that is beyond the visible spectrum. Bene, good, beneficial, giving benefits or good things. Over, more than, over time is extra time worked. Extra also means more than. Extracurricular activities are activities that are more than the regular curriculum. For and pre both mean ahead of. Foretold means to tell ahead of time. Pre-game means before the game. Super means above. Superscript is small script typed above the line. Again, all of these prefixes indicate positive views toward the word to which they are being attached. Common prefixes, negative, Un, not. Uncivilized means not civilized, or unremarkable, meaning not remarkable. Dis also means not. To dislike something is to not like it. To disrespect something is to not show respect. In also means not. Inactive means not active. Insane means not sane. Another way we can express the idea of not is through non. For example, a non-issue is something that is not an issue. Nonsense is something that makes no sense. Sub means below. A subordinate is someone lower in rank. Anti means against. Anti-war is someone who opposes war. Antagonist 
is someone who opposes the main character in a story. Miss means bad. To misstep is to take a step into the wrong place. Common prefixes, numerical. Mono means one. Monotheistic is the belief in one God. Bi means two. A bicycle has two wheels. Tri means three, where we get our word triple and triangle. Quad means four. A quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. Penta means five. The Pentagon is a five-sided building. Hexa means six. A hexagon is a six-sided shape. Hepta means seven, and a heptagon is a seven-sided shape. Octo means eight. A stop sign is an octagon, an eight-sided shape. Non means nine. A nonagon is a nine-sided shape. And dec means ten. The decimal system is a system based on units of ten. Common prefixes, other prefixes. Semi means half. A semicircle is half of a circle. Poly means many. A polytheist is someone who believes in many gods. Tele means distant. A telephone is a device used for speaking over a distance. Enter means between. An interstate is a road that allows for travel between states. Mid means middle. Mid-game is something that happened in the middle of a game. Max means great. Maximize means to make the most of a situation. Dict means to tell or to speak. A dictator is someone who speaks law and tells others what to do. Trans means across. A transatlantic voyage is one that goes across the Atlantic Ocean. Auto means self. An autograph is your signature. Bio means life. Biology is the study of living things. Micro means small. A microscope is a device used for looking at small objects. Una means one. United means acting as one. Ante means before. An ante room is a small room before a larger room. And co means together. To combine is to put things together. Word meaning and usage. As it is used in the passage, the word blank most nearly means. Or, as it is used in this context, the word blank means blank. Notice that in both instances, the focus is not on the denotative meaning of the word, but the focus is on the connotative meaning of the word, how it is used within the context of the passage. Remember that you need to consider the connotative as well as the denotative meaning to answer these types of questions. Word meaning and usage. As it is used in the passage, the word blank most nearly means. Or, as it is used in this context, the word blank means blank. Notice that in both instances, the focus is not on the denotative meaning of the word, but the focus is on the connotative meaning of the word, how it is used within the context of the passage. Remember that you need to consider the connotative as well as the denotative meaning to answer these types of questions. Let's look at some examples of how connotative and denotative meanings can change the tone of a passage. Consider the following words that all mean a group of people. Crowd. 
the noisy crowd cheered when the first floats of the parade came into view. Assembly. The assembly sat quietly as the speaker presented the lecture. Congregation. The congregation listened attentively to the rabbi. Mob. The angry mob gathered with torches and pitchforks in the village square. Faction. The arguing factions couldn't come to an agreement. Gang. Some young people join street gangs to find acceptance, but are ultimately led into criminal activity. Union. The electrician's union provides training for its members. Notice that although all of the words mean group of people, they each carry a very different feeling because of the context in which they are normally used. Again, pay careful attention to a word's connotative meaning. Fact versus opinion. It is important to be able to delineate between fact and opinion in writing. Fact and opinion have little to do with whether or not information is correct. Rather, these terms relate to whether or not information can be proven or disproven. The reason it is important to be able to determine the difference between fact and opinion is that you will be required to determine which information best supports a thesis or with which information an author would agree or disagree. Facts. A factual statement, whether right or wrong, can be proven or disproven by means of observation and logic. For example, if I said the desk is made of wood, let's assume that the desk is actually made of metal. Can we prove or disprove my statement about the composition of the desk? If my statement can be proven or disproven, even if it is wrong, it is a factual statement. Opinions. Statements of opinion are subjective, based on personal feelings or beliefs of an individual or a group. For example, if I said that a metal desk is better than a wooden desk, the use of the word better shows you that this is an opinion because it is not something that can be proven. Are there instances in which a wooden desk may be more functional than metal? Probably. Even if there were not, perhaps I just like wooden desks better. In any case, Using the word better makes the statement an opinion rather than a fact, because better cannot be proven or disproven. Words that indicate opinion. Good, better, bad and worse. Right or moral, wrong or evil. Superior, inferior necessary and essential, unnecessary and non-essential, should and must, shouldn't and mustn't, love and hate, easy and simple, difficult and complicated. This is not a comprehensive list by any means, but it does give you some examples of the type of words that indicate opinions. One easy way to determine whether something is an opinion is to consider whether a statement is based on observation or evaluation. Facts are generally based on observation and data collection. Opinions are generally based on values and evaluative criteria that is either subjective or based in the culture and the ideological principles of the individual making the observation. The desk is made of metal observation based on knowing the properties of metal. Metal desks are better than wooden desks, opinion based on my experiences with both types of desks. Remember, factual statements can be wrong, but they are still factual because they are rooted in observation and can ultimately be tested and proven or disproven. 
Let's practice. Label each of the following statements as fact or opinion. Cats are the best companions for the elderly because they are entertaining. Dogs can be trained as service animals to serve people with special needs. Dogs are much better pets than cats because they are more friendly. Contrary to popular belief, milk is not a good treat for cats. Dogs are happier when they have kids to play with. Cats, when kept as pets, can live over 17 years with proper care. Cats are not good pets for people with small children. Dogs generally live 10 to 13 years if they have proper care. So, let's take a look at our practice. In the first sentence, cats are the best companions. Best makes this a statement of opinion. In the second sentence, stating that dogs can be trained to service animals, I'm given information that I can research and I can evaluate based on whether or not it actually happens. This can be proven or disproven. Dogs are much better pets than cats because they are more friendly. This statement is clearly a matter of opinion. Anytime I use an evaluative word like better or worse, I'm always stating my opinion of the situation. Contrary to popular belief, milk is not a good treat for cats. This is a statement that can be evaluated either by consulting my veterinarian or by doing research online. It's something that we can prove or disprove, so it's a fact. Dogs are happier. Happier makes this statement an opinion. There could be many dogs that are perfectly happy playing only with adults. Cats, when kept as pets, can live over 17 years with proper care. Again, this is a statement that I can either research or consult my veterinarian. Next, we have that cats are not good pets for people with small children. Not good makes this an opinion. I could find many people with small children who think that their cats are absolutely wonderful pets. Finally, dogs generally live 10 to 13 years if they have proper care. This is a statement that I can either verify with a veterinarian or verify through my own research. So you'll notice that the opinions are highlighted in red and the facts are highlighted in green. Always remember to look for key words in opinion statements that make them opinions. Words such as best, better, happier, and not good are the key things that make the statements opinions. Figurative language. One of the most difficult aspects of learning a new language is learning the phrases and expressions that have a meaning beyond what their literal definition implies. When writing academically, it is highly recommended to avoid using these types of phrases simply because they tend to cause confusion among readers who may not be aware of the particular phrasing being used. In narrative and personal writing, such phrases can give a unique personal or regional touch to the piece. This is especially important in fictional writing where authors use such figures of speech as tools to aid them in creating believable characters. Figurative language, metaphor, a metaphor is a figure of speech in which a writer states that one thing is something else for the purpose of comparison. For example, if I said, this wedding is a circus, people are running everywhere. You'll notice that I have stated that the wedding is a circus. Obviously, I know that this is not the case. However, this type of comparison allows me to show how strongly I feel about the subject and the thing to which it is being compared. A simile is a figure of speech in which a writer makes a comparison using like 
or as. This wedding is like a circus. People are running everywhere. You'll notice that a simile is very much like a metaphor. However, it's somewhat less intense in its comparison. Figurative language. Personification. Giving a thing human characteristics. Fall leaves danced on the breeze as we walked through the park. You'll notice in this example, I have given the leaves the human characteristic of dancing. While leaves don't actually dance, this description does give me a visual image of how the leaves looked blowing in the wind. Hyperbole is a figure of speech in which a writer exaggerates for emphasis. For the millionth time, please refill the copier if you use all the paper. While it is unlikely that I have actually given this reminder a million times, it does emphasize the point that I've given it many times, and it shows how strongly I feel that the listener should in fact remember to refill the copier. Figurative language, symbolism. Symbolism occurs when an object represents a larger idea. He handed her a single red rose and she immediately understood why he was there. Note, symbols are very much rooted in culture and tradition, so it should never be assumed that a symbol has a universal meaning or that a symbol will be understood without context or explanation. If you have trouble understanding a symbol, consider the author's cultural background for clues. Supporting an argument. One type of question you will see on the test gives you information that is not in the passage and then asks whether or not the information strengthens or supports the writer's argument. To make this determination, you have to have an understanding of the original essay and of the evidence that you are being asked to consider. There are a few key considerations when you are deciding if information strengthens or supports an argument. In the next slides, we will give you a checklist of things to consider, but remember to always use your own best judgment. Supporting an argument. Is the information relevant? Relevant means about the topic. For information to support an argument, it must be on topic. Remember that not all on topic information supports an argument, but information that is off topic definitely doesn't support the argument. Number two, does the information support the thesis? Remember that you want to understand the difference between information that is about the topic and information that supports the thesis. Information can be generally about an argument without supporting that argument. Information that supports the thesis will either add details that provide the reader with additional information or will clarify existing details to make their meaning more clear to a reader. Note, just because something is on topic, please remember that it doesn't necessarily support the argument. Let's practice. Which of the following facts, assuming all are true, best supports the argument? Burgers from Sam's Cafe are better than burgers from Bill's Grill. A. Sam's Burgers are cheaper than burgers from Bill's Grill. Note that in this statement, cheaper does not necessarily equal better. B. Sam's Cafe uses higher quality ingredients than Bill's Grill. Higher quality ingredients would logically have the potential to yield better results. But remember, an important test-taking strategy even when I see an answer that I believe to be right, I should check all answer options 
to determine the best answer to the question. Sam's Cafe Burgers are on sale the first Monday of every month. This is good to know for the buyer on a budget, but does not really prove that the quality of the burgers is in fact better. Option D. Sam is a good person who really cares about his customers. While this statement appeals to emotion, it doesn't logically relate to burger quality. Sam may be a wonderful person and care very much about his customers, but could still lack talent when it comes to making burgers. Analyzing and comparing texts. Some questions will ask you to compare the viewpoint presented in different texts. To do this, you need a clear understanding of both texts. Begin by identifying the main idea of both passages. Then, identify the main supporting details. Next, determine how the perspectives are similar and how they are different. Often, Passages will look at two different perspectives on an issue, so there will be some parts that are similar, but there will be key differences. When analyzing and comparing texts, one of the most important skills that you can gain is the ability to anticipate the type of question that you'll be asked. Generally, there are four types of questions you'll find on a text comparison. Number one, the author's perspective in each of the passages. Number two, similarities in the passages. Number three, differences in the passages. And number four, given a piece of evidence, determine which point of view it would support. If you keep the possible questions in mind, you will be able to read with a focus toward gathering information that will help you with your answers. Final thoughts. Reading is like any other skill. It is something you can practice and improve. If you want to get better at running, you run. If you want to get better at lifting weights, you lift. If you want to get better at anything, you practice. Reading is not a skill that you can acquire in a cram session or a quick test prep seminar. It is a skill that takes time and persistence to build. If you want to improve your reading skills, read a variety of fiction and nonfiction texts. Focus especially on reading texts that are academic in nature. Remember that you won't find much high interest young adult fiction on standardized tests. The text selections tend to be academic in nature. Finally, Remember that reading for information is different than reading for pleasure. Even if you don't like reading, you can be good at reading for information, but it takes consistent practice. The first step is to commit to a regular reading schedule. Even 10 minutes a few times a day can have a huge impact on your reading skills. Pick a text, set a schedule, and start building your reading skills today.